Welcome to the brand new API portal. We've got a fresh new look, but the same powerful and stable APIs behind it. And today we're gonna to get into a few things, which is going to be looking at the APIs available. We're going to be creating a subscription, getting an API key, and then having a quick look at a few basic examples of how to use these APIs. So let's have a quick look at the APIs available now. I'm gonna to go to the APIs in the top right menu. And we can see what's available here. We can see a number of blockchain RPC APIs, as well as Flare Rosetta, and some other explorers like the Flare Explorer, Costin Explorer. And we're gonna be looking at the Flare API today, which is a node, a Flare JSON RPC node. And we can see some documentation here, which gives us a good insight into how we can use this, including the base URL, the WebSocket base URL, and also the node configuration, which will give us some insight into what limitations we have when using this node, and also the APIs that are available on the EVM machine here. There are also a few usage examples, and we will have a look at one of them quickly as well after we get our subscription. Now to start using these APIs, we need a subscription. And if we go over to subscriptions tab here, we can see all of them available, which is through from the core plan to the growth plan. And each of them has a different consumption price rate. And we still have our core plan here, which offers uh, no cost for up to 30,000 API calls. However, we do see that each of these plans has a $5 setup fee. Now to, in order to actually get started with one of these subscriptions, we need to fund our account. So I'm gonna to go to my account at the top right here. And in order to add credit, we can see at the top header here, add credit, and you just add $5 at the minimum amount, and you can go through the checkout to fund your account. I've preloaded my account with $5 here, and I can go back to the subscriptions tab and click choose core and subscribe. And as we can see, I now have a subscription active, which is the core plan. There's no cost for up to 30,000 API calls. Uh, and over that, I can start getting charged per call, which means I just need to fund my account a bit more. So to actually start using this, we need to also create an app. Now the apps will just allow us to create an API key and manage our API keys through each of the deployments that we might have. So in the left hand corner here, I'm gonna click add new app and I'm gonna name it my first app and select the subscription I just subscribed to, which is the core plan. And I'm gonna click save new app. We can now see that we have our app here available. I can click on it and we're gonna see a few more details here, including our API keys, the data was issued and a few different little details here. Now, what we need to get started is the consumer key. And we can click this eye icon and it will show us our key here. And we can also click copy. Now, I'm going to quickly try out one of those usage examples. So I'm going to go over to the APIs again. And I'm going to click on the Flare API documentation. Scroll down to the usage example. And I'm going to copy this usage example here, which will retrieve the latest block number of the Flare network. And I'm going to open up a terminal window here. And if I paste this in, I'm going to also quickly grab my API key. So I'm going to click copy and we're going to edit this little section here, which is with the arrow brackets. I'm going to delete that and paste my API key and hit enter. And we can see that this API key is working because we're getting a result here, which is the block number in a hex value. Now we want to probably use this in a bit more of a creative way. So I'm going to show you a repository which has a few examples to get you started with using these API keys. I'm here in the Flare community repository, which you can find on my GitHub. And it just gives us a few examples of how to utilize this API. Just quickly to note, I'm in the examples and the Flare API portal usage directory here. And to get started, you must always just install the packages, which is npm install and we can see that it's already installed for us. Now to get started, you also have to paste your API key into an environment variable. So I've copied this .env.example file and put a new one here called .env, and I'm gonna paste my API key within these quote marks here. And I'm gonna save that file. And now we can start using one of these examples. 
So the first example here is with Axios. And this is just a library which allows us to fetch data from any endpoint. And we have our API key set in the headers here, which is X dash API key. And we're fetching the API key from our environment variable, which we just created. And it's hitting the base URL with the RPC extension. And we're requesting certain data here, which is the Ethereum block number. So ETH block number which is on the Flare network. So the request is made and then it logs out this data. So to test this example, I'm going to type in node axios example.js and hit enter. And here we can see very easily and very quickly, we just got our result. Now, again, this isn't in a human readable format, but it is a result that we can start to work with. Now, if we go look at another example, which is the ETH REST example, this is just connecting to the node through ethers, the ethers library, which is just a utility library, which allows us to interact with the network a bit easier. And you'll see the difference in the response here, but also how we set it up, which is create an adjacent RPC provider. And we are also set in the headers here again with the X API key header and the API key from the environment variables. So test in this one, we can type in node ethers rest example and hit enter on that one again now we can see a bit of a different result here and this is done through the ethers library so we can see the current block number now for our final example this is using web sockets so it is again using a slightly different endpoint which we can also again see on the flare api portal documentation however we are using the api key in a slightly different way instead of using it as a header, we are actually specifying it as a query parameter. Now this might be useful if it is tricky or not possible to actually set headers in a certain application for whatever reason. However, it is just a simple way to provide the API key and start making use of it on any endpoint available. So again, we can see that we are instantiating a provider using ethers. However, this time it is WebSocket. We are again also collecting the block number but also there is a listener here, which we're looking for pending transactions. So we can see that a stream of transactions on the Flare network will be logged into our console here. So again, I'm gonna start the script by typing in node ethers ws example. And here we see the block number and then a stream of all these transactions coming in. And just as easy as that, we have already tried out three methods of how to use this API key, which is using Axios. We have tried it with ethers and also in a different way of using the API key, which is either in headers or as a query parameter. Now this can be done with all the other APIs that are available within the Flare API portal. So to get started today, just head over to api-portal.flare.network fund your account with $5 setup balance and you can jump right onto that core plan, which is no cost for up to 30,000 API calls.